Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange. Today I'm excited to do a book review of Tiamat's Wrath by James S.A. Corey. And if that name sounds familiar, that's because this is the author of one of my favorite science fiction series, and that of course is The Expanse. And this is the eighth book in a series that is supposed to be nine books long, so we're getting very close towards the end. I'm gonna keep this video relatively spoiler free. However, if you haven't read The Expanse series at all, I actually recommend going back to a video I did on the first book, Leviathan Wakes, just because I will give you more of a perspective on where the series starts. At this point, the series has gone so far from where it started that I can't really talk about this one without kind of spoiling the first book. But if you are caught up on the series or have at least started the series, this video shouldn't really contain anything that will be spoilery. Instead, I'll more talk about my feelings, opinions, all of that, and let you know if I think you should check out this latest volume. So like in the previous books, this one follows multiple perspectives. Most of them are returning characters like Naomi, Holden, etc. that you are already familiar with, as well as a couple of new perspectives. One of the perspectives, Elvie, I really enjoyed because the fact that she was a scientist who was learning about the protomolecule, as well as another perspective, Teresa, who is the daughter of Durat and is basically a space princess and kind of falls into that role. She's only 14 and she was probably my least favorite perspective just because I'm not a huge fan of court politics and princess characters in space and I just felt she was a little bit more immature, which makes sense considering she is 14, but of all of the perspectives, that was the only one that I wasn't particularly interested in her chapters until later towards the end, I can't say why, but they kind of pulled her into the story in a really interesting, fun way, and I kind of liked how all the different chapters and perspectives came together. If you are a long-term fan of the series, there will be certain character perspectives you won't be missing in this volume, and I'm not gonna say why or who, but I definitely did miss them, but I think the authors are really trying to make sure that the book has consequences and isn't just appealing to fans, but really telling the story in an authentic way where you don't always get the story you want, but instead get the story that actually happened in this fictionalized world. And so while I was missing certain points of view, I do kind of understand why they chose to do that. And I think this book is going to set up the last book so well. As I mentioned, I really like the other perspective of Elvie because she, as a scientist, was investigating the protomolecule. And while these books are always very focused on the soft science, as in they don't have a lot of hard science in them, instead, there's a lot of technology that exists, but the authors don't really bog you down in how it works. However, the protomolecule has been such a key part of all these books that I was getting to the point, I was getting frustrated that I really didn't understand what it was. And I like the fact that this book finally, finally went into some detail and you got to see a little more of what it can do and a little more understanding of the aliens that created or used the protomolecule. At this point, this is like in the final stages of setup where we are looking towards wrapping up the conclusion of the series. And I think people who enjoyed some of the later books in the series will enjoy this one as well. I'd say it's very focused on the politics of the universe. And it's not always my favorite part of the series, so it was a little bit dense that way. I still have enjoyed all the books. I did give this one four stars, like all the other ones have either gotten four or five stars from me. But I really enjoyed the last like maybe 200 pages especially. I felt like was kind of bringing the story back to its roots and I just know it's setting up that last book so well. Like this whole time, all I could think is what a masterpiece that last book is gonna be because I just feel like it's gonna go out with a bang. I know the authors have a plan for how the series is supposed to wrap up. I'm excited for it. I think it's gonna be great. And like a lot of you, I'm now in the boat of anxiously waiting for that last book to come out. So all that being said, I do recommend this book to anyone who is enjoying the Expanse series. As long as you have enjoyed the later books in the series, you will definitely enjoy this one as well. I think it's one of the stronger books to have come out in the last few years. And as I said, I am just anxiously, anxiously waiting book number nine. Hopefully we'll be out in the next year because I just need to know what is gonna happen. 
and I just continue to love this series. It's definitely my all-time favorite science fiction series, and I would love more people to read it. So if you haven't read it, do check it out. Start back in book one. You have to start from the beginning. It's well worth it. While these books are chunky, you will fly through them. I read this one in just a couple days and would definitely recommend it. So those are my thoughts on Time Mat's Wrath by James S.A. Corey. I did receive this book from Orbit Books, which I requested for review because I absolutely love the series and I wanted to check it out and give my thoughts as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.